In this presentation, we are going to focus on the relational query languages. Before understanding what is a relational query language, let's see an analogy. Let's say I wanted to have some coffee. So I am assigning the task of preparing a cup of coffee to two people. Let's say X and Y. And let's assume I am providing all the required resources that are required for preparing the cup of coffee. And we know two people, they are X and Y. To X, I am just telling him to prepare coffee. But to the person Y, I am informing each and every step on how to prepare the coffee. At the end, we know both X and Y will be preparing the cup of coffee. But the difference is, to X, I just said what is required. But to Y, I instructed what is required and how to get that. With this analogy, let's step into the topic of the day, the relational query language. And I will explain you shortly how this analogy is related to the topic. So let's now see the relational query languages. At first, we must understand what is a query language. A query language is a language in which a user requests for information from the database. We know database only is going to store all our data. Whenever we want some information or data from the database, what language is used for requesting the data from the database? It's the query language. So, a query language is a language in which a user requests information from the database. And generally, this query language is considered to be at the higher level than that of a standard programming language. Why it is considered to be at the higher level? Let's say we are going to withdraw some money from ATM. In that case, we will be obviously going and visiting the ATM machine. There, there will be a user interface where we are going to interact with the system through that user interface only. And that user interface will be obviously written in high level programming language. But the thing is, all our data are stored in the back end, which is the database. But from where we are going to retrieve the data? From the front end, which is written in the programming language. In that programming language code only, we are going to write the query language code. So already the programming language is a higher level language. Inside that, we are going to write the query language, which is even higher level than the standard programming language. Say for example, if I want to retrieve my account balance, then the query related to that retrieval of account balance will be embedded in the programming language only. And that's why this point says that this query language is actually in the higher level than that of a standard programming language. And basically there are two categories of query language. The first one is the procedural query language and the second one is non-procedural query language. Let's first see the procedural query language. In a procedural query language, a sequence of operations are going to be executed on the database and these sequence of operations are just to compute the desired result. In simple terms, we are going to write a query where this query is going to carry out a sequence of operations on the database in order to get the result, the desired result. And this is the job of a query language, obviously, because we are going to request for the information from the database, so we are going to supply some queries. Then what is different with procedural query language from non-procedural query language? Anyway, both are query languages. We are going to write queries and database is obviously going to respond to the queries to be precise in the form of tables. Now, what makes the difference between procedural and non-procedural query language? In a procedural query language, we are going to write the query in such a way that we are going to mention what data is required from the database and we are also going to mention how to retrieve those data. In a procedural query language, we are going to write a query. That query is going to contain the information like what data is actually required and how to retrieve those data. So this is about procedural query language. I hope now you can correlate this with the analogy. We saw two people, X and Y. To X, what we instructed? What is required? To Y, what we instructed? What is required and how to get it? In other words, to X, we just instructed to prepare coffee. But to Y, we instructed we need coffee. Also, we instructed Y how to prepare coffee. This procedural query language is like Y in the analogy because we are saying what is required and also we are instructing how to retrieve those data. So this is about the procedural query language. Before we step into non-procedural query language, let's see an example here. The example for procedural query language is relational algebra. In this chapter, we are going to focus on relational algebra. At the time, I will explain you what is relational algebra and why it is referred as a procedural query language. We are done with the first category of relational query language, the procedural query language. 
Let's now move on to the second category, the non-procedural query language. In non-procedural query language, the user describes only the desired information. It means we are going to simply say what data is required. Are we going to instruct how we are going to retrieve the data? No need to describe how to retrieve those data. If we instruct how to retrieve those data, it is procedural. But what we are talking about? It's non-procedural query language where we are going to simply say what data is required and we are not going to mention how to retrieve those data. And this language is like the X in the analogy where to the X we just mentioned we need coffee. That's it. So non-procedural query language is like X in the analogy and the example for non-procedural query language is the relational calculus. We have two types here, the tuple relational calculus and the domain relational calculus. So in relational calculus, we are going to just say what data is required and we are not going to explicitly say how to retrieve those data. So far we are done with the procedural query language and the non-procedural query language which are coming under relational query language. Before we sign out, let's see a few more points about the relational query language. Already we have understood what is a query language and we also have understood why it is at the higher level than that of a standard programming language. And we know there are two categories, procedural and non-procedural. When we talk about this relational query language, basically this relational query language is terse and formal. Why it is terse? Because the syntax of relational query language is in a short version, but also not in a friendly way. And that's why I'm referring it as terse. So relational query language statements are terse and they are formal. And coming to the next point, this relational query language lacks the syntactic sugar of the commercial languages. It means the syntax of this language is not easier to read or express. If that is the case, then why do we need relational query languages? Because this is going to be doing the fundamental techniques of extracting the data from the database. And this is true because the main intention of having query language is to get the information from the database. In order to get the information from the database, we are going for relational query languages because they have the fundamental techniques for extracting the data from the database. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.